Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 16th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. If you applied the monthly roll-up for Windows 7 and Server 2008 R2 that was released on Tuesday, you may have run into a number of different problems. And Microsoft apparently has stopped pushing this update to users. Now, at the time the patch was released, Microsoft noted three possible problems with the patch. First of all, that the SMB server may leak memory. They also stated that on 32-bit systems, machines with, with physical address extension disabled may have problems that lead to a blue screen of death. Also, machines that do not support the SSE2 extension sets may have problems. But apparently those issues weren't the only issues and the issues people complained about mainly affected virtual machines. In virtual machines, a new Ethernet device was then added to the system and the old one was lost. Also, IP address settings were reset to the default. So if you had a static IP address configured, you ended up with dynamic configuration again. And of course, if you didn't have a DHCP server, then those systems ended up with no address. So if you ran into any of these issues, you could uninstall this update. Also for the new virtual network card, Microsoft has published a knowledge base article with advice on how to deal with this. Nothing yet from Microsoft about how to deal with the IP address settings being reset. And then we got uh, more details about a vulnerability that SAP patched last month in its CRM product. This is a sort of an interesting case of how various vulnerabilities can be used together to actually lead to a complete system compromise. It all starts out in this case with a directory traversal vulnerability. Directory traversal vulnerabilities allow you to read arbitrary files. In this case, the attacker is able to read encrypted admin credentials. And then, of course, the attacker would be able to decrypt those credentials. Now, encryption is actually not that terribly difficult in this case. The passwords are not hashed. And the encryption algorithm is known for SAP and the encryption key is stored in the same directory. Next, the attacker would log into the SAP system and use a second directory traversal flaw in order to actually alter the logging directory for the application. The logging directory then points to the document root of the web server. So what the attacker would do now is inject logs by essentially just making appropriate requests to the server that then write executable code in into the log and since this log is now located in the document root that code can be executed by hitting this URL with the browser. So pretty interesting combination of vulnerabilities and how they can be exploited actually teaching the defending web application class here this week we just went over exactly these vulnerabilities in class this week. Again, affected is the SAP NetWeaver AS Java, which is part of SAP's customer relation management system. And VPN Mentor did take a closer look at three popular VPN applications. The first one was Hotspot Shield, then also Pure VPN and SendMate. With Hotspot Shield, they in particular found problems in the free Google Chrome plugin. This Google Chrome plugin does take advantage of a number of automatic proxy configuration scripts or so-called pack scripts and they they can potentially lead to a complete VPN compromise, meaning that traffic will leak outside of the VPN and definitely the actual IP address of the user is revealed. So this only affects the Chrome plugin for Hotspot Shield. For SendMate and Pure VPN, they also found vulnerabilities in each one of them that does reveal the, the victim's 
original IP address. Now, not a lot of details here for SendMate. They just state that WebRTC is used to leak the data for pure VPN. They only show a little screenshot without any additional details. Now, as far as Hotspot Shield goes, these browser plugins are hardly ever meant to be sort of perfect VPNs and really just meant to provide some minimum level of privacy. For the other two, Pure VPN and SendMate, we have to see what the exact vulnerability is that was revealed here. As I said, not a lot of details yet from VPN Mentor. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And just as a reminder, we're still sort of working on giving away a Raspberry Pi this month. Just leave a comment on the podcast show note page. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.